Oh, thank God you're here. I've been absorbing tech news all day and my head is starting to feel like a balloon filled with concrete, but now I can let it all out. Come, share in my pain. Google is reportedly considering charging users for AI-powered searches once the tech giant presumably comes up with a better name than search generational experience. It has to be good if it's gonna endure the year and a half before Google kills it. The report came from the Financial Times and Google has not denied that it entertained those thoughts, partially due to the rise of other AI-powered conversational search tools, which make it a lot harder to plunk misleading sponsored links at the top of search results. Just how paywalling Google's AI search would stop users from turning to other AI tools that skim regular Google search results isn't clear. And neither is the answer to whether OpenAI used YouTube videos to train its wildly impressive video generator, Sora. YouTube CEO Neil Mohan says if they did, that would break YouTube's rules, a clarification it was necessary for him to make after OpenAI's CTO, Mira Marathi, told the Wall Street Journal she's actually not sure about whether Sora was trained on YouTube videos, but not before taking a full three seconds to gift the internet with a new reaction face. For all the AI Zoomers. In other AI news, courtesy of the king of Apple rumor dispersion, Mark Gurman, Near rhymes, not bad. Now that Apple's accepted that the Apple car isn't happening, it's begun research on an AI-powered home robot that could follow its user around their home so Tim Cook can see what you're up to. Oh, you're gonna make a cup of tea now. That's, oh, no, it's coffee. <laughs> I love that. Such an iRobot, which I think legally could not be its name, may benefit from Apple's recent extensive research into optimizing language models to run on low-powered hardware like iPhones. I don't have a transition into this last AI story, but guess what? Waymo autonomous cars are now delivering food to Uber Eats customers in Phoenix, Arizona, because AI is supposed to have taken all our jobs by now. We gotta speed this up. Windows is being ditched in favor of Linux by Schleswig-Holstein, one of Germany's 16 states and probably the name of a bottled drink you can't afford. The state government's approximately 30,000 employees will be joining the Linux Legion and replacing their use of various other Microsoft services like SharePoint and Outlook with open source options like Nextcloud and Mozilla Thunderbird. Ascend, my children. <laughs> Join me. The state already announced plans to switch from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice back in 2021, and it looks like their resolve has only been strengthened since, probably thanks to Microsoft Edge continuing to act like the browser version of Legend of Zelda's Navi with ADHD. Hey! Listen! Hey! <laughs> This isn't the first time a German region has tried to quit Microsoft though. The city of Munich switched to Linux back in 2003, but eventually came crawling back in 2017. Open source software has come a long way though. So to the state government employees of Schleswig-Holstein, allowing us to say this to you, viel Glück. Microsoft announced a breakthrough in quantum computing error correction that could, crucially, allow quantum computers to actually be used to compute things instead of what they're used for now, which is generating esoteric press releases. By pairing Microsoft's new qubit virtualization system with IonTrap hardware made by a company called Quantinuum, I'm assuming as a joke. Researchers from the two companies were able to run more than 14,000 individual experiments without a single error. And they even diagnosed and corrected logical qubits without destroying them. A development that gave Microsoft's VP of quantum computing goosebumps and I think gave me a second headache. I mean, it does sound kind of dope though. It sounds great. In all seriousness though, as far as my puny mind can tell, this is a big step forward for this technology. And Jacob says it is too. And so he knows about space. I mean, I only studied, I studied astrophysics. It's such a big step that Microsoft is announcing the industry is now moving from level one foundational to level two resilient quantum computing. A proclamation that for me kind of skirts the line between the George Bush mission accomplished banner and Google declaring quantum supremacy back in 2019, like the tech giant version of Michael Scott. A much better thing to declare is that this video is brought to you by War Thunder, the free to play and comprehensive vehicular combat game. 
War Thunder's realism goes beyond just graphics, right down to how it feels to pilot the vehicles, or how it feels to tear a tank apart with your bare hands, not except for the hand part. And now there's over 2,500 different war machines all throughout history for you to choose from. Get started free today on PC and consoles simply by clicking the link below. What are quick bits? For the answer, look deep inside your mind. Oop, not that deep, that's, oh, oh God. Roku, the Portland, Maine of smart TV makers, apparently wants to become the Bond villain of smart TV makers by showing ads on the company's TVs, even when you're just using it to play Xbox or PS5. Roku filed a patent for a system that would allow Roku TVs to detect when a device connected to it via HDMI has paused, at which point the TV can display an ad. I mean, what you're not using it. You, might as well. The patent also explores ways to determine what content you are interacting with, of course, so they can display more relevant ads. It's not just evil, it's boring evil. This is why Amazon and Google are beating you. You could be evil, but like be interesting. You know, that's all I'm saying. YouTube is experimenting with a new feature called Jump Ahead among a limited group of YouTube Premium subscribers. They say the feature will skip right to what its algorithm thinks you're looking for based on a user's behavioral data. They also said AI a whole bunch, which has got to be a compulsion of some kind. How it works is that after a user double taps on mobile to skip forward 10 seconds, they'll be given a button that lets them jump ahead to whatever the computer thinks is the next best moment for you, which is probably when Riley Murdoch whips out his Tim Cook impression. Haha, <laughs> he is so funny, that Riley. Jessica, you really think I'm funny? No. Sony has announced a new medium format image sensor with a whopping 247 megapixels in a package approximately the same size as the 150 megapixel sensor in Hasselblad's H6D series cameras. Break that down for me, Rydog. That's exciting, isn't it, Andy? And while it's true that photographers and videographers are so over the megapixel race, it's unquestionably noteworthy that a medium format sensor could produce an image with a resolution of 19,200 by 12,800 pixels. 19K by 12, you just bought an 8K TV? <laughs> you look so stupid right now. To be fair, according to Sony's website, this sensor is for industrial use in visual inspection devices, but such sensors have found their way into consumer cameras before, so this was definitely worth telling you about. A San Diego startup has designed a new chip architecture that can run CPU, GPU, and AI workloads simultaneously on the same cores. Startup X Silicon Inc. hopes their CGPU platform will be heavily adopted in segments with strict power to performance ratios like the automotive and embedded computing markets. The startup's work joins the likes of Libre SOC, an open source project that apparently had its funding pulled in February. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Hopefully X Silicon won't have that issue since they're making CGPU open standard. It's like open source, except that it's very different and you get to make money. And Nothing, the tech company, has announced two upcoming Nothing earbuds on the Nothing website, by which I mean Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> However, it seems that following the Nothing Ear 2, they've decided to go the Valve route and give up on trying to count any higher. They've thus announced the Nothing Ear and the lower end Nothing Ear, open bracket, lowercase a, closed bracket. All right. <laughs> According to Nothing, they've removed the numbers in order to focus on the product and the unique experience it delivers, which is a bit like admitting you can't walk and chew gum at the same time. It's hard. But I can thank you for watching at the same time as I tell you to come back on Monday for more tech news. It's not actually true because I did that sequentially, but... Sir, come back!